Many manufacturers have seen better days in the wireless industry, and two of those are HTC and Motorola, both of which have new flagships out on the market. How do their flagships compare? I'm Taylor Martin, this is Pocket Now, and this is the Motorola Droid Ultra versus the HTC One. To say Samsung is dominating the mobile space is, well, an understatement. As of July, it held 30.4% of the global smartphone market share, compared to 13.1% by Apple and 5.1% by LG. As popular as brands like HTC may be, many of them are lumped into the dreaded other category. Samsung's success has come at the expense of many of its competitors' market performance, which has forced many of them to hit the drawing board and start anew. Two of the most notable companies to do this this year are HTC and Motorola, with their latest flagships, the HTC One and Droid Ultra. Which of the two is the better phone all around? That's what we're here to find out. Aside from being the same general size and shape, a rectangular wafer-like shape like practically every other modern smartphone, the HTC One and Droid Ultra have very little in common in terms of appearance, hardware, specs, and the like. From a physical standpoint, the two are a stark contrast from one another. On one hand, the HTC One is one of the most well-designed, well-put-together, beautiful smartphones we've ever seen, period, much less just for Android. Its chassis is made almost entirely of a tough aluminum, never mind the dent on ours, that can be likened to the build quality of many Apple products. It's a highly regarded phone with spectacular build quality. Its contoured back slips comfortably into the palm of your hand, and it truly feels like a premium device worthy of a premium price tag. On the other hand, the Droid Ultra is none of that. It's made almost entirely of plastic, more like a Samsung device than the Motorola smartphones we've come to expect and sometimes love. At the very best, it feels like a toy, and its flat back makes the phone rest on your fingers and thumb rather than in the comfort of your palm. It's a glossy fingerprint magnet that tries to look much more appealing than it truly is. The fake holographic carbon fiber visual effect isn't fooling anyone. Strangely enough, the cheap plastics don't give the Ultra any notable advantage in weight. It hits the scales at 137 grams to the mostly aluminum HTC One's 143 grams. We feel that may be due to some additional display real estate, but we'll get to that in a bit. The Droid Ultra has a marginally larger footprint. At 137.5 millimeters tall, 71.2 millimeters wide, and 7.2 millimeters thick, it's a mere 0.1 millimeters taller and 3 millimeters wider than the One. However, the one is 2.1 millimeters thicker, so long as you only count the bottom edge. The camera hump actually makes the Ultra sit higher off the table on the top edge than the HTC One. Some trickery, if you will. And the differences in specs are certainly worth mentioning. The HTC One comes with a 1.7 GHz quad-core Crate 300 CPU, an Adreno 320 GPU, 2 GB of RAM, a 4 megapixel camera, either 16 or 32 GB of fixed storage, infrared, and a 2300 mAh battery. Our model is the unlocked HSPA Plus model, which works on T-Mobile and AT&T here in the States, but it's also available in various LTE models worldwide. The Droid Ultra, specific to Verizon, has a 1.7 GHz dual-core crate CPU with the Adreno 320 GPU, 2 GB of RAM, a 10 megapixel camera, 16 GB of fixed storage, and a 2130 mAh battery. Verizon also offers an upgraded version of the Droid Ultra called the Droid Max with 32 GB of storage and a 3500 mAh battery. Both come with Wi-Fi BGNAC, NFC, and Bluetooth 4.0. The Droid Ultra does, however, come with a slightly larger display. It boasts a 5-inch Super AMOLED panel while the HTC One comes equipped with a 4.7-inch SLCD3 display. But the Droid Ultra's display only offers 720p resolution to the One's 1080p, 294 pixels per inch to the One's staggering 469 ppi, and the difference in clarity is noticeable to a trained eye. That doesn't mean the Droid Ultra's display is necessarily bad. It offers deeper blacks, more vibrant colors, if that's your sort of thing, and more contrast. The HTC One's display is more true to life with milky blacks. Both offer wide viewing angles and are quite bright. Oh, and lest we forget, boom sound. The front-facing Beats audio speakers on the HTC One, which are incredibly loud, as opposed to the backward-facing speaker on the Ultra. In terms of hardware, it's a landslide victory for the HTC One. If phones were priced solely on look and feel, the one would retail for several times what the Ultra would. There's really no comparison. And that's a shame, because the Ultra's younger cousin, the Moto X, is beautifully designed and built. Comparing software on these two smartphones can get a little bit tricky. As previously mentioned, the HTC One comes in a few different models. 
and not all of them run the same software. The one from HTC or a wireless carrier comes running since 5 with Android 4.1.2. The Google Play Edition HTC One comes pre-installed with Android 4.3 and all of its goodies. And the Droid Ultra sits somewhere between those two. It's running a mostly stock version of Android 4.2 with some minor Motorola customizations and Verizon bloatware. Sense 5 on the HTC One comes with a unique home screen feature dubbed Blink Feed, which is a social feed reader with integrated news stories from your favorite websites. You can set another home page as your default, but you cannot disable Blink Feed. It's an integral part of the Sense 5 experience. And the app drawer is different in Sense 5. It incorporates a weather and large clock view at the top of the app drawer. There are no quick setting toggles in the notification shade, it uses the old method of applying widgets to the home screens, and it's heavily laden with customizations from top to bottom. Change for the sake of change. However, it does come with some useful and awesome features, such as Zoe in the camera application and the custom gallery application with highlights. For a more streamlined approach, there's the Google Play Edition 1, which comes with only two notable changes from HTC. Beats audio support for the boom sound speakers and infrared support. Other than that, it's almost exactly what you would expect out of a Nexus smartphone, which is great for vanilla junkies. And the Droid Ultra isn't bad for those seeking a more stock-like experience either. Aside from the custom icons, wallpapers, and the Motorola Command Center widget, the software on the Ultra is almost stock 4.2. Sure, some Verizon apps are built in, as is touchless control, the ability to queue Google Now searches hands-free, and active notifications, the pulsing notifications on the display in standby mode. And finally, there's Droid Zap, the ability to easily share photos with a two-finger gesture up in the gallery app. So what do we make of all this? There are choices when it comes to software, and that's a great thing. If we're talking about the HTC One with Sense 5, we'd give the software edge to the Ultra. But if we're talking about the Google Play Edition HTC One, the scales would tip the other way. And your opinions may vary, so we'll call it a draw. In day-to-day -day performance, both Droid Ultra and the HTC One perform quite well, and considering they're both powered by a Crate 300 CPU clocked at 1.7 GHz, they're neck and neck. That said, the two additional cores do play to the HTC One's advantage, especially in more intensive work. During graphical benchmarks, despite the 1080p resolution, the HTC One maintained higher frame rate than the Ultra, and likewise the One averaged higher scores in various benchmarks. Both are still adept for gaming and intense multitasking, but you may want to opt for the HTC One if you plan on pushing the limits of your phone often. Our HTC One is the HSPA Plus only model, and we've been using it in Charlotte on T-Mobile. The Droid Ultra on Verizon's LTE network is clearly capable of testing higher data speeds than the T-Mobile's HSPA Plus in the Charlotte metro area. But lest we forget the HTC One also comes in many LTE variants. Battery life is a touchy subject with the HTC One. Some claim to have stellar stamina on the One, while others claim the opposite. We're somewhere in the middle, as the 2300mAh battery can typically last a full day on moderate usage, but also needs to be plugged in in the late evening. The Droid Ultra, at least so far, seems to be comparable with that, and its 2130mAh battery leaves us wanting more. Fortunately, that's why the Droid Max exists. Finally, the cameras. The HTC One's 4 megapixel ultra pixel camera has been renowned for showing that megapixels only matter so much, that it's more about what you do with those megapixels than how many you have. Its camera isn't amazing, but the optical image stabilization in HTC's software managed to produce some stellar shots from time to time. Other times, images turn out dull, noisy, and full of artifacts. The 10 megapixel camera on the ultra works decently well in the right lighting situations. But as soon as light becomes an issue, the clear pixel technology, which is supposed to capture more light, simply doesn't deliver. The HTC One has the upper hand here in both imaging software and hardware, despite its lower megapixel count. It produces more realistic images and, in general, is more balanced. The Ultra tends to underexpose more often, produce milky images, and create lifeless images. However, we do love the ease of use of the Ultra's camera interface. Of these two, we ask you which one you would pick, Motorola's Droid Ultra or the HTC One. The answer is clear for us. It's not that the Droid Ultra is a bad phone. It isn't. Its software is quite nice with some very useful features without being too bloated, and it performs respectably well. But the HTC One is in an entirely different league. The Ultra's build quality is admittedly not Motorola's best work, whereas the One is some of HTC's finest. The One's build quality is unprecedented. It comes with two fantastic software options, its performance is great, and it's widely available.
For the price, the only way we would recommend the Droid over the HTC One is if you're in need of extra long battery life. In that case, we wouldn't technically recommend the Ultra, but it's next of kin, the Droid Max. That's going to wrap up this comparison. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to let us know by clicking the thumbs up button below and subscribing. You can find us on Twitter, Facebook, and Google Plus at PocketNow. And be sure to stay tuned for more Droid Ultra coverage over the next week, as well as the many, many videos you'll see from Aoife, from Michael, and Anton in Berlin. I'm Taylor Martin. You can find me on Twitter at CasperTech, and I will see you next time.